I'm Thor with Delorier, and this is my assistant Jason, and we're here to talk to you today about making concrete test beams. Test beams are tested in flexure, not in compression. Uh, anytime you have a concrete element that is subjected to moving loads, like an airplane that's landing and, and that load moves down the runway, uh, bridges, some uh, concrete pavements on highways, uh, any number of things where you have a moving load, it's often beneficial to get flexural strength data rather than compressive strength data. And that's what these beams are used for. There are two sizes of beams available. This smaller beam is four inches by four inches by 14 inches long. The larger beam is six inches by six inches by 21 inches long. The selection of the beam size is typically determined by several factors. One is the nominal maximum size of the aggregate. Um, and generally speaking, if it's one inch aggregate or less, you can use the four by four. If it's over one inch aggregate, you need to use the six by twelves. The other thing to keep in mind is that ASTM basically says, when you're doing field testing on be with beams, you need to use the same beam size that was used when the mix was designed, the concrete mix. So that's important to keep in mind. Each mold is filled halfway and then it's rotted one time for every two square inches of surface area. In the case of the six by six by 21 beam, that comes out to 63 rods. In the case of the four by four by 14 beam, that comes out to 28 rods. So I'm gonna fill these with concrete and we're gonna let Jason rot them. And then when we're done, uh, we'll strike them off and we'll have two nice uh, freshly made concrete beams. You probably will have already taken the concrete temperature in this process. That should be done every time you make test specimens, whether they're beams or cylinders, you should always take the temperature. And technically you should also always run an air content test, but we're not covering that here. So we're gonna get started with these. We're gonna fill the six by 12, or six by six by 21, I should say. Half way to the top. And we may not have enough concrete to do it, but we'll see. And then Jason's gonna step in and he's gonna rod that 63 times, evenly spacing the rods and not impacting the bottom. While Jason's doing that, I'm gonna fill the small beam halfway. Now, when he's done rotting that, he needs to knock the voids created by the rod out of that specimen so he's gonna use this rubber mallet, a little sharper, Jason, right on the ribs. Give it nice and firm taps. There you go. Watch for those voids to come out. Now the other side. Okay. What he's doing is by doing this, he's when that rod penetrates the concrete, it creates a little void in there and you need to close that up so that when you test this in compression, there aren't any weak spots in the concrete sample. That looks good. A lot of times, if it's low slump concrete, a lot of paving mixes, he's gonna rod this 28 times on the smaller beam. A lot of uh, concrete mixes, uh, paving mixes, I should say, are low slump, like one to three inch slump. This is fairly wet because we made it just for demonstration purposes. Uh, that lower slump probably then needs to be vibrated as opposed to rotted. If the slump is higher than three inches, you can use the rod. If it's less than three inches, it should be vibrated. So we've rotted that 28 times and we've knocked the voids out. So now we're gonna top off the six by six by 21 mold. And as you can see, one of the advantages of the four by four by 14 mold is it doesn't require as much concrete. It's also easier to move. It's lighter in weight. The, the, the sample that comes out of it is lighter. 
So it's easier to move, it's easier to cure, easier to handle, easier to transport. All of those things. And we probably do not have enough concrete made to finish that 4x4x14. Four by four by we'll see, but you're going to get the idea from us doing the 6x12. And again, if you, if, when you go to rod this, if you don't have a, quite enough concrete in there, you can add some as you go. So now we're going to rod this 63 times, slightly penetrating the layer below. And while Jason's doing that, I'm going to top off, hopefully, the smaller beam. We make the 6x6x21 beam in steel, like this, and also in plastic, like this. The plastic is very popular because it's easy to clean and it's lighter weight. And it is considerably less expensive than the steel. And it looks like we actually had enough concrete. Now we're going to knock the voids out of that one. Okay, and the other side. All right, now we're going to rod this one in the same way with the smaller rod. Remember, you must use this 3 8 inch diameter tamping rod for the smaller samples, the larger 5 8 inch diameter rod for the larger beam. Now we're gonna knock the voids out of that. You can watch this concrete kind of settle in there as he's doing this, and that's those voids coming out. Very good. Now there are lots of different ways to do this. Uh, none of them is right versus wrong. You can actually use a tamping rod to do this to finish these off, but that's a lot of work and, and I'm not sure it, it yields the best sample. So we're going to use a straight edge uh, or stri what we call a strike off bar. And we're just going to start working across the side of this and get this excess concrete off. Now, when these are tested in flexure, we're not going to test this finished edge, we're going to turn this thing on its side so that we get a smooth edge, top and bottom. So this doesn't have to be perfect, but we want it to look good. So now we're going to use a sawing motion and get the rest of this excess concrete off of here. Now, unlike a concrete test cylinder where we can put a tight fitting lid on there to keep this moisture in, this concrete sample, in the case of beams, there aren't any lids that fit on uh, beams. So we'll use, uh, generally speaking, once it's taken an initial set, we'll put wet burlap on top of it and then put plastic on top of that to keep the burlap, the moisture in the burlap. The burlap keeps the sample wet. And Jason, if you want to finish that four by four. There you go. And that sawing motion. And if you get some voids in the top, you can stick a little concrete in there and work it into the sample. That's not a problem. I'll show you how that's done. We'll just get a little bit of mix here. We'll sprinkle it on some of these areas where we've got a little bit of voids. We'll work that in with the uh, straight edge. Press it down in there a little. There you go. Now work it. Okay. And the same with cylinders, with beams. Once you've made these, they need to be where they're going to stay on the job site for the next 24 hours within 15 minutes of when you have finished making them. That's how you make a concrete test beam for flexural testing. If you need more information, give our office a call. We'd be happy to help you.